Kia ora and welcome to Afiti Peninsula where we are today. Uh, uh, so the Afiti Peninsula, uh, so today we're going to be at Mahani Hani at the northernmost point of the peninsula. Uh, Afiti Peninsula is located on the southernmost southwestern shore of the Manukau Harbour and bounded by the Tasman Sea on the western side of the peninsula. Um, because of the um, Afiti Peninsula is a 22,000 hectare, uh, essentially a sand dune. And so to that end, there's, um, the, the land is quite vulnerable and um, the, there's a lot of erosion on the western coast. There's a very rich um, cultural history of Ngāti Tiata Waiahua here. And uh, the cultural land, many of the cultural land features are still visible. So pa sites, um, rua um, and midden are often, and, and can still be, uh, are still seen. And I, uh, this, a lot of this work has been um, recorded by Kaumatua George Flavel. Uh, George was recently recognised for his work with the QSM. Uh, and um, George is a very quiet, humble man who um, one of his many strengths is about pulling people together. And so he's, he's over the last 30 years, George has been able to work with many landowners, talking to him about the, talking to them about the significance of um, cultural sites on their properties. And um, now many of those landowners have opened their, um, their property to Ngāti Tiata to be able to go and visit those sacred sites, such as um, Puki Tapu, and as I mentioned, the, um, the Rua and um, the Rua, et cetera. Um, so George has recorded all this information and um, yeah, this has been, um, really quite a big shift in, in the thinking for the whole community, I think, here. Um, Afitu is in the Auckland Council, part of the Auckland Council Territorial Authority, and most importantly today, it's home of one of the, the last remaining stands of Lopamutus of Kodata, Rohutu, and Tamaki Makaurau. The other stand of um, uh, Rohutu is at, um, is at um, Aotea Great Barrier, and they've been doing some similar work, I understand, to what we've been doing here. Also at Mahani Hani is this um, po, which has uh, been carved under the um, um, under under George's watchful eye. Uh, George is the, um, the man in the, the um, blue t-shirt, the blue top, blue top here, and so this is also what you'll see here at Mahani Hani. So Rahutu at Mahani Hani um, in 2016, fruit from two stands of Rahutu was was stored at the um, Margot Ford and Cyan Herbariums, respectively, um, 10,000 um, seeds from each um, from each site um, ahead of the um, anticipated myrtle rust in the region. Uh, Michael Bartlett from Cyan um, had observed a small sample of Rahutu for the last four years and seen constant decline in the plants. Um, in 2022, the Afitu Land Care Group was contracted to Auckland Council to apply fungicide to 27 trial plants. Um, we were mon we monitored these plants. Um, uh, propagated cuttings and were to um, um, clearly propagate any seed that was produced. And um, the plants that Michael had been working on were in this trial. Uh, clearly Rahuta was classi classified as um, functionally extinct and un unable to reproduce in the wild. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of background um, to the Afiju Peninsula Land Care Group. We've been running for uh, 28 years um, and the, the group started up um, out as a result of um, Many landowners have been concerned about the erosion on the peninsula and also the damage that was being done by possums to, um, significant, um, to significant areas, particularly some of the uh, coastal, particularly some of the coastal Pahutakawa forests. Um, there was a lot of people um, in those early days who did a lot of work um, for, on, on the smell of an oily rag and um, many, many volunteer hours were carried out um, to, to get, the, um, to get the, the land care group up and running. If we fast forward to 2023, we now have a full-time employed pest control um, uh, pest controller who uh, helps many landowners with their pest control issues, uh, laying bait, doing bait lines, etc. And also, there are a number of um, obviously uh, landowners who, who look out do their own bait control, or do their own pest control. And this is all supported by Auckland Council. In 2020, uh, sorry, pardon me, in December uh, 2020, we were awarded. Um, some funding from MPI from through the One Billion Trees Fund, and this was to um, work in partnership with uh, Auckland Council and Ngāti Tiata as part of the Chikorua Papatua Nuku project, in which um, Apitu Landcare's responsibility is to grow 250,000 native trees for planting on biodiversity focus areas, wetlands, the re-establishment of wetlands and stream sides across the and iwi land across the peninsula. Uh, we'd just uh, really like to acknowledge here our team for, um, we're in year three and at the end of this planting season we'll have planted 200,000 trees, so we're well on the way to obviously meeting the part of our 
um, our contract our, part of our contractual agreement in the um, with, um, with the um, MPI and also to um, be able to hopefully launch ourselves into a more sustainable model where we won't be necessarily dependent on um, on, on funding. So um, every project has its challenges and here in, for our Rahutu project um, we, uh, we, we, work, we work on this um, very majestic um, but windswept uh, terrain and so for our, our, our team they're actually saying that the easiest part is actually to physically spray the trees how we're getting there can create um, a number of challenges um, on the steep terrain the, um, we, we imagine the humidity of Auckland we're wearing ha um, hazmat suits wearing full face masks um, along with a backpack uh, this this um, image here is just to show the um, the impact of the wind on the, um, the peninsula. There is um, a few Rohutu in the foreground here, but this is a, a very windy site. Um, wind speeds recorded up to 140 kilometres per hour. So in spring and summer 2022-23, we, be, uh, we began this project in um, sorry, sorry we began this program, project in um, September 2023. Uh, sorry, 2022. Pardon me. Um, under optimum conditions, we would have sprayed um, fortnightly. Um, so we would have ideally we would have sprayed um, 16 sprays. There's been extremely inclement weather in um, Aotearoa, New Zealand, over the, the, um, the last um, the last summer period. So we managed to get on eight sprays during that period. Um, clearly, during spring and autumn, when metal rust is most prevalent, it's very important to get this make those spray applications. Uh, so we used um, we, we cyclically applied. Um, uh, um, um, to, to create um, the fungicide, um, to, to mitigate fungicide resistance, we used a combination of uh, sprays over a cycle in a cyclical manner. So we used Citadel, copy oxychloride, Flint, and Euro Z. Um, Citadel and Flint being the systemic, um, being the systemic, the systemic sprays. As part of this, as part of the research that's happened over this um, six-month period across the Motu, um, we will, will now move to spraying monthly. In the winter, I'm um, using Segurus Flexi. One of the other small challenges was that this is very entangled, um, entangled sort of coastal um, area has um, a lot of um, other small leaf plants that don't look dissimilar to Rohutu, and often we'd be um, have a small false alarm where we think that we'd actually found a Rohutu that had um, started to germinate, and but in fact that it was growing itself. But in fact, no, there was um, a mixture of Caprosma, Rhamnoides, um, Mulembecia. Um, and rat are all often intertwined amongst the, the, the species that we were, the, the, the trial plants that we were managing. Um, so yeah, another challenge that we ended up on um, with this project, and we've been going along quite swimmingly, and then um, uh, we had a, a serious cyclone Gabriel here in New Zealand, um, and this wiped out the main road to the peninsula, so we, um, we, we um, lost our access. We are um, very grateful, however, to um, James Kello, the owner of um, uh, lighthouse station who um, reinstated a, a, a track through his through their property um, so the staff can accept to and, and make gave, a gate access which they have now allowed us to to use and we um so we can continue with our work so these are um, typically the fungicides we used um, and as everybody will be aware that we were we didn't want to be getting um fungicide resistance so this was the importance of using um, these chemicals and uh, this this program was set up for us by um, Dr. Rob Beresford from Plant and Food, and uh, yeah, he continues to um, monitor and manage um, manage these this across the country. And so, <laughs> so when we came to visit our when we came to um, do some monitoring um, in December 2020, we found that this is what the um, the trees on the the left of this image. Um, this was how many of our trial plants were looking healthy. Um, very little sign of myrtle rust compared to the, um, this, the image on the right, which um, plants that hadn't been sprayed, they look very dehydrated, in very poor condition. Um, and in some of the, just, just wanted to comment here as well, that on some of the, um, the plants we found, um, they had a lot of um, manuka, which also a Mutaceae species, um, Lepospermum scoparium, growing up through the, um, growing up through the plants. They had, um, very new growth, which typically would have been affected by myrtle rust, and so it indicated to us that though those plants showed no sign of um, myrtle rust at that time, it was the manuka. And we did under we do understand that the only place manuka has been seen 
with um, myrtle rust on is in the um is in, in a, a nursery situation where cuttings have been taken so here we can see um our um our um, intern um courtney who's um we were very excited obviously to find some fruit on two of the plants which was which was really good success um also one of those plants had, was one of the plants that had been in Michael's research since 2016. And so we have Courtney here um, uh, covering the fruit so it wasn't um, taken out by the birds until it was, and, and that we could then harvest it when it was fully, fully, um, fully ripe. In this intern role, we were really determined to make sure that it was uh, not just a short term contract that didn't really have much meaning. So we, we wanted, really wanted our intern to be, this to be a springboard opportunity. So we, Slightly extend, we were able to slightly extend the funding for this to give, um, allow our intern to have nursery experience and equally just study towards a, um, um, a, a certificate in horticulture. And um, so for Courtney, she um, plans to attend um, our Unitech next year. So we really um, hope that this is, this is a good experience for her. And we've been certainly grateful for, to her. So we have, um, in December 2022, we began to start to see um, specimens in flower. Um, fruit was beginning to set. Um, Scion could see a distinct um, improvement in the plants in their trial. And um, yeah, we did observe that there was myrtle rust spores on some flower buds, which meant we wouldn't have been able to harvest those. Um, also in December, we began to take cuttings. Um, so we took semi-hardwood cuttings. And this continued through until other this continued through until um uh, just just recently this week yeah um our process for cuttings is simple um we propagate um we just put the um the, the, the cuttings into um trays filled with pumice and dip all the cuttings into rooting hormone hormone and then mist is required so some of our successes have also been that um michael and his team have identified the leaf having um uh, the, the micro Parasite fungus, which potentially mitigate um, the myrtle rust, and we've also had an, we've seen infected leaf with larvae from the the gall midge, um, um, that attacks the root myrtle rust, which is seen on the new growth of the Mahutakawa, which was also um, in the Scion research trial. To carry out all this work with the new cuttings, we with our cuttings, we do have to have an off-site nursery to protect the um, metaceous species that we have here. Um, the nursery is very low tech; um, everything's manual. Um, and we just have to we completely just go down there and it's not possible to to um, mechanize this at all because of the nature of the site and um, despite that um, we've we created we believe it was like created a very uh, nice little poly house and nice warm poly house for all the um, every every rodent that, that's possible and um, so we do quite a lot of pest control here as well Uh, we have a lot with um so our seeds were um obviously rahutu seed is best sown fresh so we um we we did this immediately from after harvesting and we found that we had germination within 21 days um we've got um and as of yesterday we had um 18 seeds um had germinated and we've just got those across two um two of our sites um here at Afitu, and we're also taking more seed um more seed to auckland botanic gardens um tomorrow um, and we're seeing the next challenge is of getting the seedlings from um, through to the potting on stage. Um, with our cut, just want to talk about the success with cuttings. That, um, it took us nine weeks during that, that summer period to get the cuttings to strike. Um, that was just um, in, in our plastic house. Um, we've currently got 50 cuttings struck and we have um, four cuttings that had ended up with myrtle rust, so of course they don't um, become part of this process. And with our cuttings, we have um, we have had quite a few challenges. We find that we've we found that we've had increasingly we've had um, losses from um, the cutting stage, the potting on stage. Um, so we're sort of moving into a, a different strategy to allow better root development um, make, and leaving the, the, the cuttings in trays maybe through to spring. And um, then we're going to pot um, so then we'll pot them on into five centimetre pots and rather than these bigger PB3s, um, which perhaps was an oversight on our part um, initially. Um, and then we have that age old trick of how much is too much or too little moisture just in that um, re-establishment phase of the plant. 
So here we reflect on what we've been, what's been achieved. Um, we've increased um, the awareness of Rahutu in our local community. Um, Mando's are willing, willingly advising us um, on where other Rahutu plants are on their properties, which are, indicates that they have trust in um, the way that the land care group operates. Um, we hope that we've contributed to Myrtle Rust research nationally. Uh, we're in, it's very inspiring to be part of a, um, a conservation project that's had success from early days. And um, we do um, discuss and remind our staff that you know many people do a lot of work on uh, conservation projects for a long time and don't um, don't have such successful outcomes. And we, but as I say, we, we are very aware that it's early days. Um, we've been very um, impressed by um, the motivation of our staff to work on this project, as well as keeping up with the other um, nursery commitments. And I guess the question is always the next steps. Um, we'll continue to spray monthly through um, winter 2023, and we'll return to a fortnightly spraying schedule from September 2023. Um, We'll visit the Scion Nursery to, um, so we can improve and refine our practice as they've been doing a lot of um, work with um, mutatious, mutatious species um, in their nursery in Rotorua. Um, and we have an upcoming meeting with all the partners and parties to see where to from here. You know, things like funding opportunities, what will become of the cuttings, um, where will we, what will we do with the seedlings. Um, and some of those plants that people have, identi when people have identified other Rahutu um, plants um, on their properties. We have off, we, we went and took cuttings off most of them, and we found that within about a month, all those um, plants that had been well, clearly unsprayed out of the trial got myrtle rust immediately. So we just um, we just landfilled those. Um, just in closing, we'd like to thank and acknowledge um, Ngāti Te Atawahua, um, James Kello and Lighthouse Station and his staff for cooperating. Um, um, with this, this project, especially after the um, issues with the, with the road dropping out. Um, I would like to thank Michael Bartlett and his colleagues from Scion for their, not just for their previous work, but their assistance to our team. Uh, Rob Beresford for, um, from Plant and Food for his assistance with the spray regime in developing um, a very helpful app that's been, um, that's available through the NZPPI website. And in fact, this app, app's been incredibly useful for us because we can, although we um, only travel 12 kilometres to the, the head of the peninsula to spray, the um, weather conditions here on our nice, flat, quite protected site are very different than those, obviously, at the exposed head of the peninsula. So um, often we do go to the um, go to our spray site, uh, go to our trial, our, our Rahutu trial sites, and we're unable to um, spray because the weather is just so incredibly different from from here. Uh, we'd also like to thank uh, Rebecca Fuller and Emma Simpkins of Auckland Council. And we'd just like to acknowledge all the citizen science, scientists who do a whole pile of work um, and their experience and observations, particularly in New Zealand, that goes onto the, um, the, um, the iNaturalist website. Um, in closing, I'd like to thank um, Boots on the Ground, our land care team. Our team um, um, took up this challenge ably and willingly and um, still managed to, as I've mentioned, um, enthusiastically maintain the other um, nursery responsibilities, which were many of our staff included studying. Uh, this team's been led by Linda Jones-Lee, supported by Lisa Field, Kathy Graham, Danny Whisker, Courtney Torpey, and we'd just like to thank as well our, our one of our key staff is our propagator, Jill McLean. And we'd also like to thank um, Beyond Myrtle Rust and Jenny Leonard for your assistance today. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nikki. It's amazing to hear how successful this initiative has been. Um, I'm happy to field questions from the audience. Um, audience, if you just want to pop those up into the question boxes in the panel on the side. Um, I'll start with a question, if I may. Um, was there anyone on the team or in the broader community who was wary of using chemical fungicides? Uh, that's a really good question, Jenny. <laughs> um, yeah, initially, uh, so in our nursery, we're trying to move um, we, we have a very low chemical use, um, and we had been working to, um, you know, aspiration had been, has, is to um, have a non-chemical nursery that can produce high quality plants. Um, so when we, we were offered this contract, there was a little bit of conversation about um, the use of sprays, people's health. So um, all our staff are very safe certified, um, and we provide all the health and safety gear required. But yeah, there was a little bit of nervousness initially, but I think um, when people started to see the success, of the, um, of the success and the health, improved health of the Rahutu, that things um, 
yeah, that, that people could um, started to, to move a little bit away from that. But I think that will be a discussion um, to be had in the future. Great. Yeah. Um, we have a couple of questions coming in. Uh, one compliment. Amazing, Nikki. Great presentation. And then a question. Are cuttings sourced on site or elsewhere? Uh, that's a good question. No, the cuttings are sourced on site. So we're taking those cuttings just out of our trial, our, our spray trial plants. All right. Um, and then an, a comment or compliment from the same person saying a really interesting and successful project. Thanks, Nikki. Um, I have another question for you, which is uh, for those international viewers, uh, you may not know that this species is one of two species in the Lophomyrtus genus, and the Lophomyrtus genus is endemic to New Zealand. Nikki, do you have any Rama Rama or Lophomyrtus bolata on the peninsula that you're aware of? Um, no, I, under I think that, um, I understand that Lophomyrtus bolata has been, um, is extinct here now because of myrtle rust, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Did yeah, it, yeah. and you think it used to occur, but it no longer does? I, I, I think so, yes, yeah. All right, interesting, all right. Well, um, it doesn't seem like there are any more questions today. Oh, one more question. Um, but I, if if you, the audience, want to keep sending questions, I'll keep we'll we'll keep this open for a little bit longer. Um, the next question that has just come in is, um, have your group considered trying to establish ex situ conservation plantings for the cuttings, ideally located in areas with relatively low climatic risk for myrtle rust? Okay, so that's a very good question. Yeah, that will be one of the um, that is one of our questions for the for the next um, for the meeting that we have. Um, plan shortly where, where everything will go. Um, I guess there'll be some question about how low um, um, where we find sites that there is no um, myrtle rust or low myrtle rust in New Zealand so that we can mitigate the spraying. Um, so yeah, I can definitely um, come back to people um, on that after um, we've, we've had a, a, a team meeting with, um, with the, the, all the parties involved. Great. And I know that there has been some refugia work in New Zealand, so it may be that those could be moved elsewhere. But I am yeah. I that that could be an option. I'm not sure what will come out of that meeting, but that's exciting that that's on the on the on the board there. Um, and then there's another question. Um, you are meeting soon to decide what steps are next for the project. Would you like what would you like to see happen? That's a great question. Oh. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Um, well, we would like to see, you know, obviously um, having species die um, becoming extinct is not not cool. So we'd love to see more um, awareness of, um, we would like to see if, if we could um, have more Rahutu up here, it would be fantastic. Um, um, however, constantly spraying isn't, um, isn't probably an answer for the future. Um, so we would like to be able, you know, it would be great to be able to, able to have a nursery where we were producing Rahutu that could be um, going back, about, back out into those revegetation plantings, but that may, may be a little bit off, you know, off in the future. All right, interesting. Um, and another question. It seems like spraying fungicide is a bit like trapping. You need to sustain it indefinitely mm. once you yeah. start. Do you see the spray program continuing long term? Um, I think that's more a question for um, Rob Beresford, who um, has set up the spray program. But yeah, I think that's a, that's a very good analogy. And um, it may be one way that we can get some good plant material to get some reproduction going um, and, and to maintain the species. But yeah, I think that's a, maybe that's more targeted for Rob. All right. Um, and did you see, did you observe any resistant plants in the field? No, but I think it's important to say that one, um, so, so we, we sprayed on two, two different sites, the eastern side of the peninsula and the western side, and the plants on the eastern side were very weak um, from, from the get-go, but we did find that those cuttings actually took better, um, even though those, um, and those, those cuttings from the eastern side where the plants were weaker took, took, um, took really quickly. Um, uh, and some of the plants in the trial were weak from the get-go, so they may not have survived anyway. 
All right. Fascinating observation there. All right, well, we do not have any more questions and also we are uh, running out of time. So um, thank you so much, Nikki. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks, Nikki, for your presentation. Um, a video of today's webinar will be made available on the Beyond Myrtle Rust website in the next couple of days. It will also be emailed to everyone who's registered. Uh, there is no webinar in June as we will all be too busy preparing for the uh, Australasian Myrtle Rust Conference in Sydney. The next webinar will be held in July by a to-be-determined speaker, so keep a lookout for the webinar invite closer to the time. Thanks, everyone. Harira, and see you next time.